Ontario Parks made some exciting new updates to the reservation system for 2022. We're going to talk about them and we're going to give you six tips for booking an Ontario Provincial Park campsite. Mm -hmm. We are Cheryl and Ben Coles. We've been camping together for over 35 years. A few years ago, we started doing video reviews of Ontario Provincial Parks to help people when researching places to visit. We are now in season four of our park reviews. We hope this helps you when deciding where to have your next camping adventure. Thanks for coming along, Camping with the Coles. Now we only get one life, I wanna make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. We did a similar video to this last year, but we decided to update it because since that time, we learned more from you and we wanted to share that information with you. And the Ontario Parks has just posted five new updates to the reservation system and we wanted to share that with you too. Mm -hmm. So this video has everything in it that last year's did, but uh, with some more new stuff. Let's get started. So we go to the ontarioparks.com website We'll click on English, we'll click on reservations. You can reserve online or you can reserve by phone. We're going to reserve online. I recommend at this time to sign in. If you already have an account, you can just click sign in. If not, create an account and follow the prompts. So we'll sign in, then we'll create a reservation. It takes you to campsite and that's the most common type of reservation. That's regular car camping sites in all the provincial parks. A couple of new features for 2022. Under day use, if you want to get a daily vehicle permit, you can book them up to five days in advance, thereby avoiding the long lineups and potential disappointment of being turned away at the gate because the park is full. Another new thing for 2022, under backcountry, you can now reserve specific sites for Killarney and Algonquin, and that will make it much easier for you for planning your hiking or canoeing adventure. We're just going to go to campsite and you can pick on the park you want to go to. So if you click in this area here, and if you just start typing what park you want to go to, it'll take you there rather than having to scroll through the whole list because there are a lot of parks there. And then pick the dates that you want to go. So let's have a look here. Let's just say we will go to Kilbear on June 5th because that's five months from now. And we will go for, well, to the 8th. So you can pick a departure date or you can just choose uh, how many nights and it'll fill in that date for you. Under equipment, you want to put in what type of equipment you have. We have a 25 foot travel trailer. We often will put in though up to 32 feet. Party size, um, you can have up to six people in your campsite. There's no difference in cost. Uh, we often say six because uh, we don't know uh, who of our family is coming and there could be six of us although usually there is just two or three of us. Now there are other filters here. You can click that. If you worry about if it's shady, that sort of thing, double sight, pull through, barrier free. Um, the only one I worry about here is service type and electric. We prefer electric sites. Now one of the new things for 2022 under restrictions at the very bottom is generator free. They've made uh, many of the radio free areas at the parks now generator free too. So you can choose that. I'm not going to choose that. And I'm going to do a search. Comes up with Kill Bear, shows you all the different campgrounds there. And if there is a green dot, that means there is availability matching your criteria. Orange means that uh, there's partial availability matching your criteria. Black means it is completely unavailable. If there's red, that means it's booked right up. So let's go to Herald Point here, click on the green dot. It'll take you in there. The triangles are non-electric sites. The circles are electric sites. And we have uh, green ones, which means matches our criteria. Orange ones doesn't match all our criteria. So we'll click on, let's say 506 here. Now, over here, you can see uh, a picture right there. If you click on the picture, it'll bring it bigger. And you can see if there's more pictures by clicking on an arrow here. Usually there's one or two pictures of the site. It also gives you some information here about the uh, site. If you want a little more detail, they give you a lot more information. 
by just collect, pressing the more details. Now you may have noticed something here that uh, hasn't been on here before and that's the notify me button. That is brand new. If everything is completely booked up here, you click on notify me and it will send you a notification when there is something available that matches this criteria, the dates, the location and the equipment. However, I noticed it doesn't uh, have the other filters such as electric or non-electric. So you can save that notification and Ontario Parks will notify you when there is an opening. That email is going to go to everybody with the same criteria that clicked the notify me button. So it's going to go to a lot of people at once. You're going to have to be fast to try to get that site. Now I reached out to Ontario Parks to find out how long after a site becomes available that they will notify you. And they got back to me and said that the notification is immediately sent. So we'll have to wait to see how that actually works. So we'll just click out of that. Another new thing is over here, this tab, similar. You click that tab, it will show you parks that are similar to this park and in a same general area that have availability for your criteria. And it shows there's availability at Arrowhead, Grundy Lake, Oster Lake, Sturgeon Bay. So let's just go over to Grundy Lake and click on that, view the map, and look at that. It takes us right to Grundy Lake and shows us where there's availability. So let's go to Hemlock, click on there. And here we go, we can book right from here. That's a great new feature. Uh, I really do like that. You don't have to uh, go searching for all the different parks around there. It searches it for you and takes you right there. We'll go back to Kilbear. And uh, one thing you might wanna do is find out when these other sites, like if you're looking uh, for one of these other sites and you wanna see when they're gonna come available, you can go to calendar view and it shows. So site 511 will come available on June 12th. 597 will come available that day. So you'll know when that uh, site is available if you want to select it for that day. Let's say we like this site, so we click on Reserve, and there's a park alert. Now once you click on Reserve for the site, the system will hold the site for you for 15 minutes. That gives you 15 minutes to complete the rest of the steps for reserving. Realistically, that should only take you a couple of minutes. If you haven't completed the reservation in 15 minutes, the site is released and available for anybody else to take. The earliest you can book a site is five months before your planned arrival date. So you want to be on the reservation site five months to the day at 7 a.m. sharp. If you want to camp from July 1st to the 4th, you'll want to book February 1st. To ensure you have the right time, you can click on System Time at the top. This window will open showing the exact time that the site is using. You can move this window anywhere on your screen. Prior to 7 a.m., log into the system set your filters and pick your reservation site. Click on the site so you can see the reserve button. When the clock hits 7 a.m., immediately click the reserve button. It will then tell you if someone else got it first by saying it's not available or it will go to the next step in the reservation process. Cheryl and I each have an Ontario Parks account. So what we do is we each log on to a computer with our own accounts and we each try for a different site. That way we double our odds. If one or both of us gets a site, then the one who gets it completes the reservation process. And once it's finally confirmed that we have a site, great. If the other one has a site at that time, we'll just cancel that and it'll become available for anybody else. If neither of us get a site, we may try to look at other sites that are still available and try to get them. Or something we often do is we keep on trying for the sites that we originally tried for. You wanna keep watching because somebody might be doing what we're doing and they might have that site as a backup ready to go if they can't get another one. And then they'll cancel that site. So you wanna wait for 15 to 20 minutes after. Sometimes people have difficulty in the uh, process and they get timed out after 15 minutes and the site becomes available again. That has worked for us on a couple of occasions. We were able to get a site when somebody timed out at 15 minutes after seven. Another 
other thing we could try and do is to book a non-electric site um, if we're prepared to boondock for that trip. As the date gets closer, we can check for an available electric site. And if one becomes available, we can change our uh, reservation. The cost of changing the reservation is $7.52 plus tax. If you can't get a site for the date and place that you want five months in advance, don't worry. There's going to be plenty of cancellations. Okay. People will start canceling their reservations one month after making them. So that means you can start checking daily to look for new cancellations. Hopefully the notify me tab will help with this situation. Another thing you can do is join a Facebook group site such as Ontario Parks Cancellations. On this site, people can post cancellations that they want to make and are looking for someone to take over. That saves them paying the cancellation fee and only costs the 752 plus HST change, change of reservation fee. You can contact them and arrange the change. You can also put requests for dates and parks and someone can contact you if they have something that matches what you're looking for and they want to get rid of it. Another option is to use a third party app. Mm -hmm. After we put out this video last year, we learned about an app called CampNab and we started using it. It's a web-based app, so you don't have to install anything on your computer or your phone. You go to campnab.com and create a scan, then put in your criteria just like you would on the park's website. So you can type in a park, we'll say Kilbear. Shows you all the campgrounds for Kilbear. You can pick multiple ones. We'll say uh, Granite Saddle, Harold Point, and Kilcorsey. You can scan for all openings. That will be for every size of equipment, uh, electric, non-electric, everything, or you can filter your scans. Up to 32 feet, so you can uncheck all of these. And I want it to be a campsite, yes. Electrical hookup, I'm gonna say electric. And include barrier-free sites. No, I wanna leave those available for people that need them. Click continue, then you can pick your arrival date. Let's go to June, we'll say June 5th. Now, flexible arrival date. If you have some flexibility in your schedule and you don't actually have to arrive exactly on June 5th, you can say flexible arrival date and it'll give you two days before and two days after June 5th for your arrival date. You set the number of nights that you want. So the fewer number of nights that you want, the better chance you're gonna get it. But we're gonna say we want three or more nights. And then you add the scan. So we're all set. We're scanning Kilbear Provincial Park for availability on Friday, June 3rd for three nights. So we can go to the dashboard and see the scan right here. And it is active and it's checking every five minutes. It's running since January 5th at 4.01 p.m. It's that simple. Now, Camp Nab is not just for Ontario parks. It's also for every other provincial park and national park in Canada, and also in the United States. Now, depending on the plan you have, Camp Nab will scan the Ontario Parks website every five minutes to every 15 minutes for sites that match your criteria. When it finds one, it will send you a text message or email notifying you and giving you the link to the Ontario Parks reservation system. It's then your responsibility to go into the park site and book the site if it's still available. You can get a single scan for $10. A better plan is to do a monthly plan. And remember the monthly plan you can cancel at any time. We used Camp Nab last year to get into Long Point Provincial Park and Sandbanks. Yep. Um, it took us a couple of days to get into Long Point and it took us about two weeks to get into Sandbanks. So really for $10, we were able to get both of those parks because we could cancel our subscription after uh, getting those two parks because we got them within a month. Friends of ours, uh, they used the app and they were trying for Pog Lake and Algonquin Park, which is an extremely busy park and they wanted it near the end of July, a very busy time. They were very specific with what they wanted too. They wanted a particular campground and they wanted a waterfront site. Mm -hmm. So they looked at the Ontario Parks <coughs> map and they saw that there's 12 sites that they'd be interested in. And through Camp Nab, they just actually entered just those sites. So they only wanted to be notified about those sites. Right. And they wanted seven days. So that's a big ask. Mm -hmm. Well, it took about a month and a half 
but Camp Nab came through and they got four nights over a weekend at what we've talked the about. Is, choice. Yeah, it's the best site in the park, uh, in our opinion. And uh, then they had to move two sites over for the last three nights, but still another waterfront site. Mm-hmm. So it really came through for them. P.S. Don't ask us what the best site is. We've already been asked and we won't say. <laughs> You're trying for one of the most popular parks, such as Algonquin, Kilbear, Sandbanks, Pinery, and Bon Echo, you might want to try for a less popular park. There's a lot of great parks out there. As we know, you can book a campsite five months from your date of arrival. Well, you can book that site for up to 23 mm-hmm. days. What that means is 23 days after your arrival, you can have the site still reserved. What many people do is they book the site for the full 23 days. And that could be for various reasons. Maybe they actually want to camp there for 23 days. Maybe they're trying to schedule with a few groups of people and they're all trying to get a site. And so they need to book extra to ensure that everybody uh, can get a site. Or maybe they don't know their holiday schedule that far in advance. So they have to book a big block and then they'll cancel some later. And those are all perfectly acceptable and valid reasons to do so. But some people will try to beat the system. And what they'll do is they'll book 23 days before they actually want to go camping. So for instance, if they want to book the long weekend from July 1st to July 4th, they'll actually try to start booking for June 12th. So they can go in February, February 12th, and start booking. And they'll book for the full 23 days, which takes them from June 12th to July 4th. Mm And then a month later, they'll go ahead and cancel all the beginning dates just so they have the first to the fourth. They just pay a 10% cancellation fee for doing this, and many people are willing to pay that fee. I'm not a fan in this manner of booking sites. In effect, you can take up a prime site at a prime campground with just three bookings for the entire summer. Then everybody else has to scramble trying to find a campsite. And still, if you are booking this way, on June 12th or February 12th when you're trying to book it, you're still battling people for booking at that time. Uh, It might be a little easier, but you're still having that 7 a.m. battle to try to book it. All it really does is frustrates a lot of people who are just trying to get camping that summer. So please don't do that. On that note, if you do have a reservation and you don't need it anymore or some dates that you don't need anymore, please do cancel them and cancel them as soon as you can. Open up those dates for other people. Many times we go to the parks and we see empty campsites during prime camping season. And that's a shame. There shouldn't be any empty sites. We know that the booking process is difficult and online every site is booked. So there should be people on every site. And it's just a shame when you see an empty site because Mm -hmm. that could have made a family very happy to be there that night. So the cancellation fees go like this. If after one month of making the reservation you cancel, it's a 10%. Uh, cancellation fee. After two months, it's 20%, three months, 30%, four months, 40%, and five months, 50%. So those are our six tips for booking an Ontario Provincial Park campsite. If you have any tips for booking an Ontario Park site, put them in the comments below so others can benefit from those tips. Good luck on getting your site booked. Thanks for watching. Bye. Baby, don't you understand?